A.W. Tozier, a man I, I greatly love writing, reading his writings, he says, our uncrucified flesh will rob us of purity of heart. Christ-likeness of character, spiritual insight, fruitfulness, and more than all, it will hide up from us the vision of God's face. Did you get that? The uncrucified flesh will hide you from God's face. That vision, which has been the light of the earth and will be the com- completeness of heaven. The, the word of God has the power to save us, to transform us, to touch us, to change us because of the cross. There is no power outside of the cross. There is no word of God that changes lives apart from the cross. Now, because of the cross, we have this word. Now, in understanding the cross, there are three principles you need to embrace, you need to understand. The first principle, and this is from 1 Corinthians 15, is that the cross is the wisdom and power of God. It's stated in the Bible. You've got to understand the cross is the wisdom and power of God. It it reveals the heart of God. It reveals his desire for, for mercy for us for justice for us, for righteousness for us. It's all in the cross. But the second principle of the cross is that the cross is opposed to the wisdom and power of man. It's opposed to it. Men don't get it. They don't understand it. And and, and the two are in complete opposition to each other. The cross requires humility, It strips man of all rights, all powers. It reveals the foolishness of man's attempts at getting to God. So the cross is the wisdom and power of God. Secondly, it is opposed to the wisdom and power of man. A.W. Tozier said again, The man who is crucified is facing only one direction. He cannot look back. The crucified man on the cross is looking only one direction, and that is the direction of God and Christ and the Holy Ghost. The man on the cross has no further plans of his own. Somebody else made his plans for him. And when they nailed him up there, all his plans disappeared. When you go out to die on the cross... You bid goodbye, you are not going back. Did you get that? When you identify with the cross of Christ, you bid goodbye to the flesh, to the wisdom and power of man. You don't go back. He writes further, he says, We want to be saved, but we insist Christ do all the dying. No cross for us, No dethronement, no dying. We remain king within the little kingdom of man's soul and wear our tinsel crown with all the pride of a Caesar. But we doom ourselves to shadows and weakness and spiritual sterility. The power of Jesus Christ is when the cross is applied to our life. Now, the third thing about the principle of the cross is that the cross is the perfect blood sacrifice for the sins of man. And we've got to realize that that sacrifice was required by God. God declared that life is in the blood. And if we want life, when we sin, There has to be a blood sacrifice. There is no other way to God. Life for life. Death for death. A.W. Tozier again. He says the old cross is a symbol of death. God salvages the individual by liquidating him and then raising him again in newness of life. 
God offers life, but not an improved old life. The life he offers is life out of death. It always stands at the far side of the cross. And this is what I was talking about a few weeks ago, is that the gospel is death with a view to increase. The gospel is always life from death. Ray Steadman, another man I greatly admire, said, first death, then life. Death leads to resurrection. When we consent to death, then the life of Jesus can flow unhindered from us. It is never the other way. We cannot claim resurrection life first, and then by means of that, put the flesh to death. We must first bow to the cross, then God will affect the resurrection. You can't just claim the good parts of God. You've got to go through the death first. The cross has to work in your life.